Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about molding planes and spring. Most people who look at these nine and a half inch long wooden planes tend to call them, unless they're experienced woodworkers, molding planes. But there are actually three different kinds of planes. They're not all molding planes. A molding plane is something that actually cuts a shaped molding. The other two kinds are planes like these. These are beading planes because they cut a bead that's not exactly a molding and the second kind are planes that are generally called special purpose planes and their job is typically not to make moldings but to make joints here is a very old plane if you didn't know, you might call a molding plane that was actually made way back in the 18th century and it's designed to cut a groove across a board. Nothing to do with the molding whatsoever. This plane, as it happens, was actually made in a shop by a man called Maddox who lived in London next to the famous cabinet maker Thomas Chippendale. Anyway, we're going to talk about molding planes, true molding planes that make an actual molding like this plane here that actually cuts a molding that's known as a thumbnail molding. And the special thing that you have to do if you want these planes to work. So here's a piece of wood. You can imagine that this might be a longer piece that I was going to use as the base of a chest or the side of a cabinet, and I want to put on a, uh, a thumbnail molding. So I put the plane on the wood, but the thing that is different between this plane and the special purpose planes that I showed you before, and the beading planes, is that the majority of molding planes are designed to be held at an angle known as the spring angle and it's all to do with the geometry of the plane and what makes the blade cut most efficiently how do you know what the angle of spring is well if you look very closely at the plane you can see two things the first thing that you'll notice is that the fence is not vertical it's at an angle when you use the plane you should use the plane so that this angled fence is actually vertical and that's made a little easier by the fact that invariably there is a line carved in the front of the plane known as the spring line. And the purpose of the spring line is to show you how far you should actually tilt the plane. So let's start planing this piece of wood. I put the plane on the wood and I look over the front and I make sure that the spring line is as vertical as I can make it. And I'm also pressing at the side to make sure that the angled fence is against the wood. Now, when I take a shaving, I start to make the actual molding. If I were to hold the plane upright, I would be getting a different shape. So it's really important to keep the plane held at the right angle. And already you can see that I have the flat part and I have the beginnings of the round part. Molding planes also typically come not only with a fence that you hold against the work, but they also come with a depth stop. If you look very closely, you'll see 
that the iron that does the cutting does not extend here because this is the depth stop. And when I get to the point where the depth stop is preventing the iron from cutting anymore, I know automatically that I've now produced the perfect proportioned molding. And I think we're almost there at this point. Now I can't take any more shavings and I know that this molding is now perfect. By contrast, a plane that's not a molding plane, like this beading plane, which is actually very, very old, and you can usually tell how old these planes are by looking up in published books the picture of the maker's imprint on the front, and also the other way to identify how old these planes are is by the shape of the actual wedge. Because although the vast majority of these planes, special purpose planes, molding planes, beading planes, were all nine and a half inches long, each maker had his own unique profile for the wedge. Anyway, this plane was made by George Darby in Birmingham, England in 1764. And it still works perfectly. But since it's not a molding plane, it has no spring line and I'm going to hold it upright. So watch mm -hmm. how this plane works. I put the fence against the wood and I go forward. And with just a few strokes, I have made myself a really nice little bead. The George Darby plane is admittedly a very small bead. A more common size bead is this one here. And most beading planes have the size of the bead that they cut stamped on the back. Now, if you look closely, you can see that this will cut a more standard size bead, three eighths of an inch wide. So let's see how this works. Unlike the molding plane, we hold it upright. We start at the end and we simply make a few strokes until the depth stop hits the wood and we will have our perfect bead. Almost there, one more. And I think that's pretty good. One question that a lot of people have about all of these planes we've discussed is that they must be really hard to sharpen. Now, actually, the reverse is true. In a previous episode, we showed how to sharpen straight irons for bench planes. But when it comes to sharpening irons from these molding planes, beading planes, or special purpose planes, there's a simple trick. Providing that when you have the plane in the iron, if you side along the back, the profile of the cutting edge matches the profile of the plane itself, you only have one thing to do. And that is to take the iron out. And since the cutting edge is nothing more than the part where the back of the plane iron meets the front of the plane iron, all you have to do to sharpen it is simply to sharpen the back. You hold it flat on the stone, and you can see this is a fairly aggressive stone. You can see the black come off, and this sharpens it. And I've now sharpened the front of this iron really nicely. That's not a difficult thing to do. So sharpening should be no reason for you not to use a molding plane or even any of these other special purpose planes or the beading planes. I hope you like that. I hope you give it a try. Don't forget to hit the submit button 
the subscribe button, whatever it's called, and come back and we'll show you a whole lot more about how these old tools really work well.